And Bob Cox, uh, Bruce Cox, in fact, the organiser of the series, race one, the uh, reigning champion in this uh, championship, pulling his key out. Kevin Mitchell there, uh, waiting to get his. And uh, there is uh, Ken Iron. So uh, all the riders then have no knowledge whatsoever of what bike they're going to get in advance. And uh, Barry Sheen, this uh, system of pulling the keys out of the hat uh, must be a, a, a good thing to make sure nobody has a quicker bike than the rest, or at least if they do, it's by luck, not judgment. Oh yeah, it's a really good idea. Uh, the only bad thing about it is if you get the uh, bad luck of the draw at the end of the season when the bike's been crashed about 20 times, but uh, it is a good idea because as you say, uh, all the bikes should be the same. Well, luck of the draw, and uh, the luck of the draw means the, that uh, the competitors uh, get equal bikes. This, in fact, is the warm-up lap for the riders uh, running around the circuit on their machines just to warm up the tyres halfway round on this warm-up lap and uh, it really is as crucial in this sort of competition as in uh, anything else uh, because th these bikes are as I say absolutely identical and uh, to get the tyres to the right working temperature warming the tyres not warming the bike that's the object of the exercise they'll be coming round to, to the start line in a few moments lining up in the order of the championship and that means of course we shall see uh, Graham Cannell from the Isle of Man who, man, who lives almost within sight of the uh, famous Balaf Bridge on the Isle of Man TC circuit. Next to him will be Andy Watts uh, from Kings Lynn in Norfolk. Paul Tinker, well, he's from uh, uh, Waltham uh, near Grimsby in Lincolnshire. And then the young Scotsman Neil Mackenzie from Stirling in Scotland. So here we go in picture now, number four, Neil McKenzie, quick wave to the camera, hello mum, we know all about that. Paul Tinker next to him, he's riding bike number three, Paul, who last year won the uh, 250 and 350 ACU Star, uh, ACU Star Championships, a man with a tremendous uh, amount of talent. So Graham Cannell then on the far side of the grid, Andy Watts next to him, uh, a man who works in a bank in Kings Lynn when he's not racing motorcycles. See, there's a gap there on the grid there. In fact, it's not. It's uh, Graham Cannell on the far side, Andy Watts next to him, then Paul Tinker, then Neil McKenzie, then Steve Chambers. Well, uh, you're a bit of a fan of Steve Chambers, aren't you, Barry? Yeah, I certainly am. This is the bit that scares me. It's the first corner after the start. Well, they're all looking forward. It's a clutch start. They have a 10-second warning, and away they go. And as ever, it was a fairly, he fairly hectic start. They're bobbing and weaving before they go into the first corner, and it's Neil McKenzie, number four, who's got a, quite a good advantage in this thing. If you've got more than three machines like that's a good lead, isn't it? <laughs> it sure is. Actually, it's nowhere near as closely packed at the first corner as it usually is. Well, it's a good thing, really. Yes, indeed. Perhaps people are learning a little bit and deciding that they they can get themselves sorted out on the first lap. And as you see, they're getting themselves sorted out in the most uh, hectic fashion, absolutely nose to tail. And as Barry says, this uh, may not be as quite so uh, cramped and packed as they normally are, but it's a fairly hectic business. But it's still number four, Neil McKenzie, who heads this screaming pack of 20 RD LC Yamahas, water-cooled two-stroke road bikes, Still McKenzie in the lead. Actually, McKenzie's got a bigger lead now than I've ever seen anybody have after about 10 laps, let alone on the first And lap. somebody, oh, I think, so wide on the grass the well, A lucky escape there. Definitely turned into a grass track racer overnight. Still McKenzie in the lead. Now, this is another good bit coming up. At the end of this long straight is uh, chicane. And everybody, but everybody, wants to outbreak one another. So if you watch with interest as they come up to this next right-hand corner, it's usually quite exciting. And he looks like Neil Robinson, that's the younger brother of uh, Donny Robinson, the Grand Prix rider. I am number six, and good grief, the one or two little... <laughs> oh, see what I mean. Oh, and something to go straight on. Well, that was fairly desperate stuff, and uh, Ivan Gray, I'm sure that is, getting back into the action. And it was Ivan Gray from Dudley, deciding that it was safer to go around the slip road uh, than to take the chicane, and that's put him right at the back of this pack. This is a 10 lap race, we're on the second lap now and somebody else drops a card and gets a bit of a fist waving. That was Andy Watts who uh, made a, a bit of a, a, shall we say, a mistake. Yeah, I saw somebody waving at somebody, I wasn't sure whether they were saluting or doing something else. So here they come and it's still Neil McKenzie and that looks like Paul Tinker, it is, it's Paul Tinker, number three, looking for a way past uh, Neil McKenzie. Oh dear me. <laughs> 
Oh, ooh, that really is getting very naughty. Mr. McKenzie doesn't want to be overtaken, I don't think, Barry. No, I think what they ought to do when we do the commentary on this is give us a Valium before we do it, I mean. And in Paul Tinker being eased out, and whether they're going to go down in a bunch. Eased no, out. Good grief, Graham Cannell, number one. And Paul Tinker drops back to fourth place, and he could easily end up sixth at the moment. It's still Neil McKenzie in the lead, but that's Graham Cannell, number one, who's dived through in desperate fashion to go up into second place. Andy Watts there with the black cut leathers with the yellow and gold markings and Neil McKenzie has a look over his shoulder they're weaving down the back straight so as not to let anyone have any slipstream effect and it didn't do any good at all because into the lead goes Graham Cannell Cannell in the lead he's now Andy Watts number two in second place and Neil McKenzie the man who led early on oh and there's another bashing of bikes as uh, lower down the field there it's Graham Cannell though, the new race leader, and Neil McKenzie's is three bikes side by side, and Neil McKenzie charges through to second place. Andy Watts has to ease off at number 21. That's race one, the championship winner from last year, and the man who so far hasn't scored a single point in this year's competition. Well, Ray, uh, race one from Dunstable in Bedfordshire, keen to put that right, but this is the race leader, Graham Cannell. Actually, the guy that rides the smoothest at the beginning of the race has got the best chance of doing good at the end because the tyres, after about six or seven laps starts, it can really get hot, and you'll notice in a couple of laps' time the bike will start weaving all over the show. You mean and weaving it, more than it does already? Well, yeah, really. But um, a guy that's ridden the bike steady, his tyres are going to be in better shape towards the end of the race, and they only paid the last lap anyway. So, it race oh. one takes the lead. Race one in absolutely splendid style goes to the front, number 21, that's race one, the last year's championship winner, takes the lead from number one, Graham Cannell from the Isle of Man. Whoa, big slide there. Well, that was a desperate moment back there. Really hairy stuff this is, but tremendous racing. Race one, number 21, the leader. Number one, Graham Cannell. Will Cannell go through on the inside? He looks if he's got the better line, but Swan sweeps across. Andy Watts, number two, is in... Third place. Oh, oh boy. Oh, God, I hate this bit. Well, <laughs> Ivan Gray there decided he didn't want to take the corner, but in going aiming for the slip road, nearly brought himself off and about three others. That's the second time he's done that. Yeah, he doesn't like the chicane, does he? <laughs> Ivan Gray definitely doesn't like the chicane. Action at the front, though, and up into third place now goes Andy Watts. It's absolutely amazing how they can try to change lines going right across the front wheel of other people. In picture, it's number two, Andy Watts. He's in third place. Number four, Neil McKenzie, one-time leaders back in fourth place. And this 18, Kenny Irons from Luton. He's moving up through the field, but out in front, it's race one. Here we got number 21. Behind him, number one, Graham Cannell. And race one really is beginning to put on the pressure. This is a colossal lead by Pro-Am standards. Number four, that's Neil McKenzie. Number two was Andy Watts. Number 12 there, towards the tail end of the field, that's Kevin Mitchell. But it's, it really is a desperate battle for the lower leaderboard places. There's points and money at stake here. And for these lads, all of them under 24, 24 years of age, the money is important as points, I think. The way some of them ride, it's no good to them in hospital bed, though, is it? Absolutely amazing. And Paul Tinker in the middle of there, and that's the last place I'd want to be. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Oh, I don't believe it. And that was Andy Watts who found himself in the gutter there. He didn't want to be, but out in front still. It's number 21, race one. Behind him, it's number one, Graham Cannell. And Graham Cannell has dived through into the lead. No, he's not, because Swanee goes across, closes the door, and leaves no room at all on the faster line. That's your line round the uh, road gate, isn't it, Barry? Round a bit wider going in. Well, a little bit wider going in, because it gives you a bit more room to run out of road on the way out. But that guy, the guy that was leading, was using the uh, berm on the outside of the track as well. And uh, that is Paul Tinker, number three, the man who has uh, managed to pull his way clear of that uh, desperate little dice behind. Six laps to go in this race, four laps gone. And uh, as we've said so many times, these are absolutely identical motorcycles, road-going 350s, and really, as we've seen throughout yeah, these races... It's getting to hot tyre time now. You can see the bike starting to wriggle around a bit more. Well, we shall see whether Barry's right, whether the people who take it a little bit cooler, a little bit more carefully early on, the smoother riders not heating the tyres up, not putting too much pressure on, whether they'll get some advantage. And uh, a fastest lap 
uh, at the moment around one minute uh, 20 second one minute 27 that's not too bad a time on a production bike no it's a very good time in actual fact on a road bike and ken irons has now caught up for uh, race one race one in the lead Actually, I've never seen I've, six lap now. I've never, seen, distance. I've never seen a pro am race where uh, the leaders have dropped the second pack so so much. No, Usually, the whole lot are within sort of two seconds covers the whole field. Isn't it? it really does look as though it's a three-man dice at the moment, unless somebody can detach themselves from that uh, gap there, at the, the pack there at the back. I think what's happening in the second pack, they're all fighting with one another so much, they're forgetting about the leaders, and uh, they're wasting too much time. Well, it's halfway distance through the race, less than halfway stage. Race one still holds off, holds the lead. Graham Cannell from the Isle of Man, the championship leader. Swanee, so far, without a single point in this competition. Number one there, Graham Cannell, the man who leads the championship with 23. And in third place is Neil McKenzie. I'm sorry, in fact, it's Ken Irons in third place. My apologies. And Ken Irons, of course, hasn't done too well in the point stakes so far. Well, this is the three-man dice. And Graham Cannell again goes for the inside line. And uh, forces race one. You can see the bike. Oh, God. And Lean race on one it. leans on it. <laughs> Nothing like an elbow in your ribs. <laughs> Well, Mr. Swan proving the point. He didn't want to be overtaken at that particular point. And there they are, still side by side. And Ken <laughs> Irons waves at his pit crew. I don't know whether he's enjoying this or deciding he really wants to be out of it. Ken Iron goes through into second place. Maybe that signal to the rest of, to his pit crew was that he can pass them whenever he wants to. And it really does look as though he's got the legs of them. No, he's not. Race one, back in the lead, number 21. It's number 18, Ken Irons in second place. And number one, Graham Cannell from the Isle of Man in the third spot. Well, they certainly have pulled out a lead in the second pack, haven't they? Well, they've absolutely destroyed the opposition, yeah, haven't they? really have. And Ken Irons looking for a way past, and so too is Graham Cannell. Oh, no. <laughs> That's the old tyres getting hot, you see. And again, Ken Irons goes through on the inside. Has he got him? Yes, he has. Ken, Ken Irons, number 18, grabs the lead from number 21, race one, and the number one, Graham Cannell, still there in third spot. And really, it's absolutely anybody's race still. Well, that's assuming they don't knock themselves off on the chicane. <laughs> I was going to say, it's going to be a do-or-die effort of the chicane on the last lap. Well, Swanee really is good going into the chicane. Maybe he's too good. And Graham Cannell takes second place, and the man who led for part of that lap is back in third spot. Race one, number 21, in the lead. Number one, Graham Cannell in second place. Number 18, Ken Irons in third place. I would say Ken Irons. He seems the most relaxed rider of the whole lot. You know, he doesn't seem to be getting in such a state as the rest as the other two. And they're in third place now. It's uh, number six. That's uh, Neil Robinson, smutty as he is known uh, by his Irish friends. Behind the him, Steve Chambers. Well, Steve's not doing so well in this one, Barry. No, he's not. But, um... There's no, had no reason for it because, as I say, all the bikes are the same. But um, these leading bunch, they've just got such a lead now that um, it doesn't look like the other guy... Oh, look at this. <laughs> it doesn't look like the other guy's going to catch him up. And also the suspension's starting to get hot now, which is making it work a lot more freely. That's why you watch the bikes are bouncing up and down, apart from banging into one another. Well, the, the picture speaks for itself. Three young men, three very talented young British road racers on identical bikes. And they are really, literally fighting for every inch of this Donington Park circuit. It's Ken Irons in the lead, race one in second place, and Graham Cannell in third spot as they go underneath the Dunlop Bridge and head for the chicane. It's Irons in the lead, Cannell's got the inside of race one, but Swanee is a brave man, he'll just lay the bike a, a, across Graham Cannell, and he does this time. And Swanee's quicker out of the corner, Ken Irons made a mistake. I think Ken Iron should have gone into the gone into the chicane there and braked a bit earlier, so the other two guys would have thought he wasn't very good at braking. Then coming into the chicane on the last lap, just leave his braking to the proper time, and it would have been a big surprise for him. 
well at uh, Ken, a youngster. Uh, obviously not yet uh, developed uh, the race tactics of uh, a man of your experience, Barry, but uh, they've got a lot of skill, haven't they, these boys? Oh, they sure have, without any doubt. I mean, uh, I'm not all that into riding road bikes around a racing track, but um, they make a really good job of it, I must admit. And, of course, they are, all of them, competent on their 250s as well. They, they all race uh, 250 and 350 machines as well in genuine racing uh, conditions. And the news from the pits is that uh, Kim Barker has uh, pulled out of the race, so Kim Barker out of the race, and so too is Kenny Shepherd, in case any of their fans... Whoa! Oh, and uh, race one nearly retired before our very eyes. Well... Another lucky moment. Oh, good grief. Retired. Yes. <laughs> the tires. I keep saying the tires. But they really pay out. And again, see, hot yeah. tires. Well, Swanee will have to decide now whether he wants to settle for a safe third or whether... A, he <laughs> a safe third or a big heap of rubbish. <laughs> right. So it's the two-man dice going into the chicane again. Cannell on the inside and Kenny Irons swoops around the outside. Gets into a big wobble. <laughs> no. Discretion for one being the better part of Valor, and race one's coming back at him again. This is the last lap of this 10-lap race. Graham Cannell then out in front, side by side is race one, and Ken Irons, and really there's no more chances left after this one. Cannell in the lead, Ken Irons in second place. Race one is third. Behind them a long way back is Steve Chambers. Neil Robinson is fifth, and Matt Oxley, the uh, road tester for Motorcycle Weekly, turned road racer he's in sixth place well that's not a bad ride for matt this though is the man who leads this race he's got just over half a lap to go graham cannell from the isle of man the championship leader with 23 points and it's race one and ken irons and race one dives through into the second place Kenner's got it sewn up with that amount of lead on the last lap. Although you never know the old kamikaze job at the hairpin, you never know. Well, we shall see. They've got the back straight to, to have a go at him, and Ken Irons really has got the bit between his teeth. Sliding that RD, he's chin on the tank. He's chasing Graham Cannell down the back straight. He knows that the only place he can do it is at the chicane. He'll go into it at least 20 <laughs> miles an hour quicker. Than I was gonna, no, it's impossible. With that amount of lead, he'd never do it. Nothing is impossible in pro and No, never, no way. And in fact, you're right, Barry. It's going to be a win for Graham Cannell, provided he stays on. All three do. Graham Cannell, the race winner. Ken Irons takes second place. Ray Swan is in third place. That's at Steve Chambers going through in fourth spot. Number six, Neil Robinson. And the rest of the pack going through. But Graham Cannell, a tremendous victory. A good ride, too, from Ken Irons. He scored some points for the first time. And an excellent performance from the last year's the reigning champion race one but Cannell extends his lead out in the championship battle well what a performance I can't see anybody beating him actually he's riding really well Graham Cannell then and race one coming around and waving to the crowd they really have had a, a, a tremendous dice in the crowd are lapping it so Graham Cannell riding the distinctive uh, blue and yellow Wrangler bike. That uh, indicates he is the championship leader. And as I say, Graham Cannell having uh, stretched his advantage. So Graham Cannell takes a wave to uh, the crowd as he comes round to the podium. And time, I think, to hand back to Fred Darnage in the studio. Thank you very much indeed, and there's the confirmation of the result of the third round of the Yamaha Pro-Am Series. Victory for Graham Cannell, Ken Irons in second place, and defending...